The final season of Superman and Lois begun this week with one hell of a two episode opener, picking up literally at the moment of the last season, where we find the Man of Steel battling Doomsday across the moon, their fight spilling out from Metropolis and Smallville and into the entire solar system. While Superman battles the monster, Lois, Jordan and Jonathan desperately search for Sam Lane, who was kidnapped by Lex and his people. Lex not only is looking to get vengeance on Superman, but is more focused on Lois this time around. Thank Thanks to her articles being what got him arrested and sent to jail 17 years ago. Lex makes it his mission to destroy Lois and her family, even going so far as to purchase the hotel in Smallville and move in, just so he can constantly be around the Kents and their friends. On top of this, Lex is also tasked his doomsday creation to bring him Superman's heart, like his literal heart, and I assumed this was going to be a bit of a metaphorical thing with Doomsday, you know, dealing with Superman and then forcing him to watch as he kills his family, Clark's heart. But no, by the end of episode 1, Superman and Doomsday's fight comes to an explosive end and Doomsday rips Superman's heart out of his chest, killing the hero. Now this is a pretty big swing to kill your main character off in the first episode. I mean, we all know he's going to be back, you know, that's the story, the, the death and return of Superman, but that doesn't take away from the weight that is dropped on the family after discovering that Clark is dead, and the weight that's dropped on us as an audience as well. It's brilliantly acted by Elizabeth Tolu and the two sons, it's full of desperation, sadness and anger. No one knows how to act because this guy who, you know, we've been seeing is just invulnerable and unbeatable, is literally thrown on their doorstep dead with a giant hole in his chest, so like what do you do with that? Like how do you process that? Episode 2 continues with our characters coming to terms with Superman's dying. None of them believe he is actually dead, especially with his heart still out there and now in Lex's possession, the family desperately trying to get it back. Side note, Lex has a containment device for the heart made and it's over the first two episodes where we see him tell Amanda McCoy to go and make this or to go and get it made by her people. And we find out that she does and that one of her people's name is Milton, as in Milton Fine, which is a human name given to Brainiac. And she even mentions the guy is a kind of brainiac and it, it's one of those lines that kind of references what the character is and it, it's a little cheesy but it gets the point across and I want to say this is who Tom Cavanaugh who played the reverse flash in the flash series is going to be playing later on in the show since he's been confirmed to be in the show and directing some episodes so I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up turning up as Brainiac some point later on the show maybe that's how they get Superman back how he's able to heal Superman or something I'm also really interested to see what Brainiac in this series looks like since they've done a pretty good job of representing all the different types of Superman villain and, and adapting them pretty well to this genre. So I'm intrigued to see how they make him look, especially because the bar is so high thanks to series like Krypton doing just such a damn good job with their design of Brainiac. And if you haven't seen the show Krypton, I thoroughly recommend it. It's quite good. It's only two seasons and it does some really great stuff really well like Brainiac and Doomsday. Thanks to the heart still being out there, Jonathan is intent on finding it to help heal his father, who has been put in stasis in the Fortress of Solitude, while Jordan uses his super hearing to try and see if he can listen to it since Clark's heart has a specific beat that he knows by heart now, something his father taught him across the first two seasons. I really like the Jordan-Jonathan dynamic over these two episodes, and it's about time Jonathan actually had some weight in the main plot. Usually he's kind of like B-plot guy, um, and I guess that maybe comes from the fact that he doesn't really have superpowers and you know that avenue is already filled in by the other son so I could see they wanting to do something differently with him but I like that they're sort of bringing him into the fold this time around and giving him something to do since he and Jordan balance off each other so well especially now since Jordan is letting his anger and his arrogance a little bit of arrogance start to shine through and get the better of him and Jonathan is the one who's a bit more level-headed and he still understands why his brother is going through what he is and wants to help out but he's trying to do it in a more rational way. Jordan's search for his father's heart leads him to confront Lex directly, which ends up going pretty badly as Lex puts together that the masked Superboy that has suddenly turned up in Smallville is the son of Lois Lane, meaning he's the son of Superman and that Lois was actually married to Superman this entire time. So let's talk about Michael Kudlitz's Lex Luthor for a moment. Now, 
holy moly, I think this might be one of my favorite iterations of the character. He is completely different in every way in what we are used to seeing of Alex Luthor, yet he still adheres to certain base characteristics of the comic character. One change I really quite like is moving him away from the more businessman, cerebral, super genius. Yeah, he's still very smart, but there is this bitterness and anger that has kind of overtaken his life more than anything else. He's done playing games with Lois and Superman, and he's actively targeting them now out in the open, which makes him quite a terrifying villain. His random shifts in mood are scary as well, and this is perfectly encapsulated in an early scene where he confronts Jordan and Jonathan in the diner. And I love how the boys are just completely stone cold, cool, especially Jonathan, like just like no emotion, no showing anything to this guy. And because of that, and because they don't bend to his threats, Lex gets visibly mad and actually ends up like hitting the table quite hard. And I, the boys just don't flinch at all. It's it's really fucking great scene. Any other Lex would have just hidden away his emotions, but Kudlitz is so far beyond that now and just doesn't give a fuck anymore and just wants to kill this family. His relationship or lack of one with his daughter Elizabeth is at the core of his character as well, feeling that Lois and Superman having him locked up almost 20 years ago and outed as a bad guy to his family really messed everything up. And somehow, Cudlitz makes this part of Lex so sympathetic. Yeah, it's still Lex Luthor and he's a piece of shit, but you can see genuinely he wanted a relationship with his daughter and having that taken away from him broke him in a really interesting way that we never really get to see with Lex. I really can't wait to see more of him throughout this season. He's been an absolute force just over these last two episodes and it's a shame that we're only getting him really in this final season and we only got him in a couple episodes last season since he's just been a, an absolute force. Also, if you haven't seen any pictures of him, yeah this Lex is just like a burly biker guy, always wearing a leather jacket, biker pants and jeans, you know, even in the flashbacks when we get like Lex at the height of his, you know, prime, where he, where, where he still has hair, he's still very much like biker Lex and it just somehow works for him and it's like a flashbang every time he's on screen and just fits his character so well. While Jordan searches for the heart, Lana also gets in on the main story as she learns that Lex has been buying up the hotel in town as well as other farms and properties everywhere around the city. So as mayor, she wants to put a stop to that and find out what exactly exactly his plans are and she's not interested in having Lex Luthor in town at all. On top of that, she's also dealing with some town folk who may have seen Jordan using his powers and figured out that Clark is Superman. Although I like that this isn't some dramatic arc. The guy who saw Lois and Superman are family friends of the Kents and they aren't trying to blackmail them or anything like that. They're actually really cool with him because not only do they support what Superman does, but the man Chuck, the farmer who lives near the Kents, uh, also lost his wife recently and he understands the pain that Lois is going through having lost her husband, having lost Superman, so he doesn't want anything to happen to them and he just wanted Lana to know what he saw and everything and I quite like that they could have gone that opposite route where he plans on telling everyone and you know just to get money or some fame or something and Lana has to stop that but they went completely the opposite direction with that and I really like that and instead it's a great way to showcase the power of Superman and the power he can inspire in those around him to do the right thing. Things come to a head in episode 2 when Jordan and Jonathan investigate Lex's hotel, not really finding anything incriminating, only leading to finding out that he has a daughter Elizabeth and what she looks like. But Jordan begins hearing his father's heart elsewhere and races off to deal with it, and surprise, it's a trap set by Lex and his people. Jordan is subdued via kryptonite weaponry and sonic devices. Lex employs his most evil part of his plan here as he AI deepfake voice calls Lois's phone as Clark and torments her in his voice before giving her a choice to choose which son she will allow to live and she has to make this choice very quickly and she does but we don't actually see who she chooses as Jonathan is soon found by Lana in the hotel and they both escape before anyone can find them and Jordan is confronted by Lex who ends up crushing Superman's heart in front of his son. Now I don't think for a moment that this was actually Clark's heart. This was Lex just fucking with the boy and he probably set up like some fake heart to mimic the sounds of Clark's heart to, you know, trick him. And of course that would be totally on point because this Lex wants this family to feel pain and suffering before he deals with them. And that's exactly what happens here. 
Jordan is left alive and he takes the news to the family who go to the fortress where Lara reveals a hologram of Clark that he made after this new fortress was built and he left it as sort of a precaution hoping that he'd never have to use it but of course he has had to and he leaves the family with a message that while he isn't there with them they're gonna have to do this on their own now and I really like that this doubles down on the death like Superman is actually dead now and we're not getting some hint that he's alive five minutes after he dies like we're not getting you know dust moving on the coffin or you know his eyes opening or anything like he is actually properly dead and I quite like the idea of this hologram as it allows Tyler to be part of the present day storyline in some way and not just appear in flashbacks like he did over the most part of these two episodes and I also love the new suit they gave him in this hologram it's just the black suit that he had in season one when he was the evil Superman and they put some like shoulder pads and stuff on it but it looks great and hopefully we get to see more of this hologram Clark outside of the fortress. Now the one thing before I finish up this review is you're probably wondering why I haven't talked about John Henry Irons and Natasha Irons and that is because they aren't actually in this episode and story reason I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, behind the scenes reason is because the budget of this season got slashed uh, considerably because it was the final season uh, and because of that they have had to take regular uh, cast members like John Henry and his daughter and move them into guest spots and they're going to be in the next episode and it's going to be seemingly devoted to them which is quite cool I like that they actually do get an actual episode to themselves um but it is a big shame I did kind of wish that they were present throughout this entire season and throughout these first two episodes since they could have definitely helped out uh, here and there throughout it but they're just like gone and I don't think they ever explained where they have gone either I think they just kind of wave it away like Superman wanted them to stay away from Doomsday and not you know fight but it, it feels very strange and of course you know it's a budgetary thing it's not nothing to do with like the story and the story has to kind of ride around that so it's a big shame that that's going to happen and I'm sure that's probably going to happen throughout the season as well which hopefully doesn't distract from the fact that the show is actually being written still very well and it's constructed in such a way that makes you care for these characters even though you know Superman's going to be coming back by the end of the season. Superman and Lois really went all out for the opening for the final season we got some big budget action which looks fantastic and I have no idea how they managed to pull it off on a network TV budget, a slashed network TV budget. And we have some compelling character drama and stories and probably my favourite new version of Lex Luthor who just chews the scenery up whenever he's on screen. I love that they're doubling down on the death angle and really looking forward to where this final season takes us. I'm going to give both these episodes a 9 out of 10. 